Hello everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. I got Peanut here with me. And today we're going to talk about 3D printers. Last week we talked about doing some simple basic CAD design. Uh, today we'll talk about 3D printers. So mine is a Creality CR10S Pro. And I bought it for the bigger build plate. It's like 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter by 400 millimeter. I didn't really need all that. Um, I don't want you guys to think that you have to go out and get, you know, exactly what I have or whatever. There's a Nuka Cola bottle I printed. Right now I'm printing uh, a Ghostbusters ghost trap for a friend of mine at work. So this is one of the pieces. This is one of the sides. Um, I don't want you guys to think. People seem to have the impression that they're going to buy a 3D printer and they're going to model up something like, I don't know, like this, say this is a widget thing that you want to make. And you're going to sell it for 20 bucks on Etsy and you're going to get the design off Thingiverse. I got this design off Thingiverse, right? I'm going to sell these Nuka Cola bottles for 20 bucks on Etsy and I'm going to make a million because all you got to do is push the button. It, it's not that simple. Um, also, that Nuka Cola bottle took 15 hours to print. So, it's not a fast process either. So, I want you to get that right out of your head. Um, but we will go to the computer now and I'll do a screen capture and show you guys the different printers that I would recommend and uh, where you can find some files and how you can do some modeling. If you didn't watch the Tinkercad video, you probably should. At some point, you're going to want to make something that is, you know, just yours, your design. Um, but there are plenty of models out there for simple things, too. So let's go to the computer. All right. So first... For anybody who's watching this who is into 3D printers, know that I'm not an expert. My subscribers are not experts, and I'm just going to go over the basics. And I'm trying to get people started and get them into this. Um, <clears throat> if you go to Creality3D.shop, or you just Google, you can just Google Ender 3. That's the printer I recommend for everybody. It's not the one I have, but it's the one I should have bought. The very first thing that comes up is Ender 3. Um, you have to put the upper portion on. It's just screws. You guys build cars. You can build a 3D printer. There's some leveling and stuff, and there's plenty of tutorials out there on YouTube to get you started. It's $157 directly from the manufacturer, okay? And there's some other versions of this printer out there. There's the Pro. Um, it comes with a little bit better power supply, stuff like that. But I would really just recommend the Basic 3. And if you go on eBay, you can find these refurbs for like 130 bucks and save a little bit more. These are so cheap, I almost bought one um, myself. The deal with this Ender 3 is that it's probably far and away, by today's standards, the most common 3D printer people have. <clears throat> Mine costs quite a bit more and it only has a slightly bigger build bed which is the plate that you actually print on. Um, and I don't use it. I, I never utilize all that surface. I, I can print everything that I've ever printed on an Ender 3 bed, except I paid like five times as much money. So I really just recommend the Ender 3. There's tons of upgrades that you can do, but to get it and get started, it's just like everything else. Get started first. Get something together. Don't don't overthink it. Don't decide that you need two thousand dollars worth of crap. Get this hundred and fifty seven dollar printer. It comes with a little bit of filament, and we'll talk about filament in a moment. And just get started. If you go to the three D, uh, it's the clever name. They have these are Ender three upgrades. There's just every possible thing that you could want to do and don't get overwhelmed looking at this going what do i need out of the box you don't need anything out of the box out of the box it will print my printer here is still a hundred percent box stock i haven't changed a thing and i printed all kinds of stuff you guys have seen some of it so there's some things that i would like to upgrade and that i will upgrade but there's nothing that you have to upgrade out of the box at all 
But you see the possibilities here are just endless. You can even make the build size uh, bigger. So the build plate that I bought, you can buy an even bigger one yet for uh, Ender 3 if you wanted to, if you decided to use hand to print giant stuff. Um, the next thing that you want to know is where do you get models? And the most common place people get models is from Thingiverse. So you go to Thingiverse and there's all this stuff that people have already checked out that they've already designed for you. So you can do, the, here's a screw measuring thing. Here's an 18650 battery cap. This is kind of neat. These are the cells that come in like laptops and Tesla power walls. You would pay a couple bucks for these on eBay, but you can 3D print them. Um, really anything that you want to print. Here's some shelf brackets. Here's a paint mixer. So say you want to print, I don't know, something for a car. You know, we're all into cars. So you want to print a gauge pod. Let's say you want to print a gauge pod. There's a bunch of models already on here. And some of them are for, you know, a VW Mark IV, RX-7. Here's just a single pod. Here's a single pod. And you can take these and you can use Tinkercad and change these models around if you want to, too. Um, but you see there's just pages and pages and pages of these um, that you can print and just have. Say you want to print like a, a tablet holder for a car. You're in the overlanding, you need a command center. You don't want to pay $50 for a RAM mount. Here's a phone holder. I'm probably going to print this. Clips in your vent. Saves you 20 bucks. Here's a back seat holder so you can stick it in your kid's face and shut them up. There's just anything you want to use. You can get on, on Thingiverse. There's another site called Yegi. Um, which is an aggregate. So it'll pull in stuff from Thingiverse or anywhere else. So there's all kinds of, I don't know, weird stuff, normal stuff, whatever. Whatever you're into, here's a Keanu Reeves from Cyberpunk. See, it's on Thingiverse. Uh, here's a Pikachu guy. I think you get the picture. And this is on a different site, though, called Cuts. Cults. I don't know. Anyway. Um... The other thing that you need to go with your printer is filament. You don't need any upgrades. You don't need to worry about any of that. You don't need any software. It comes with the software you need. Um, but you need filament. Personally, right now, I get my filament from Micro Center because I'm in Detroit very often. And uh, I can just pick it up in the store. And they always have... Filament. Uh, 1.75 millimeter is the standard size that you're going to see. And PLA is your standard uh, 3D printer filament. This stuff can't hold up. Like, you can't make a radiator clamp out of this. It won't hold up to the heat. But most stuff, it holds up just fine. And when you're getting started, I would just recommend buying buying a, a roll of three of PLA and going from there. You can do PLA plus. I actually this says I recently viewed it because I recently bought this. This is kind of like a mix between PET G and PLA. PET G is a little more resilient to heat and things like that, but it's more difficult to print. So here's some PET G. You see it all works the same. Um just start out with PLA. Keep it simple. Print a few simple little widgets and, and learn and go from there. You see, I have a pile of crap here that it has failed. And that's not a big deal because it's only 20 bucks for a whole kilogram. And this kilogram lasts me. I printed off of this roll of filament. I printed Tyler's ghost trap. I printed like five AR lowers. I printed two Nuka-Cola bottles. Uh, I printed all kinds of stuff. And throwing away all kinds of stuff. So it's really not a big deal. You'll, you'll have this for quite a few prints. Um, the next thing that you need is a slicer. So what you do, 
Pura is the slicer that I use, okay? And what you do is you go, you type Pura into Google, um, you download it for free from their website, okay? And I'm gonna show you how Cura works real quick. This video is getting lengthy, so I'm gonna try to wrap it up. Um, this is the thing that I was actually printing. So once you have Cura downloaded and, and you open it up and you found your file on Thingiverse, uh, Tyler found this ghost trap somewhere. I don't know where he found it, but probably on Thingiverse. So I, I have the left side panel. I'm going to print him the right side panel. These are all 3D files that he sent me. These are STLs that came from Thingiverse. So I'm going to open this one up. There it is in Kira. I think this is the one I'm already printing. It is. So. Oh, I can't tell the difference. They look the same to me. Um, anyway, once you import it, you have a bunch of options over here, but you can just go with a low quality and it'll change all the settings for you. And you can go standard quality and it just changes all the settings for you. Um, and the reason that you would do that You, you'll have to learn to play with some of these settings, right? Depending on what you're doing. Like my build temperature for me, 210 works better. And my build plate temperature for me, 65 works better. My print speed, I'm not able to go much over 35 millimeters a second. Um, enable retraction, that pulls the tip up away from the material. If there's enough demand, we'll get into this at a later time. But, uh, once you have this the way you want, you just click slice and it generates all the G code you need. So we'll save this to file so you guys can see it. Um, and then I'm going to open it. Here it is. I'll open it in notepad so you can see this is plain text. So, so those of you who are machinists like myself, you'll recognize this right away. It's an interface like MasterCam that generates all your M and G code for you. So G1, G92, it tells it exactly G28 home. Um, tells it where to go. Where to, These G1s are, are slow speed moves. G0s, apparently it doesn't use them. But it generates all the X, Y, Z coordinates for it to go through. There we go. There's a G0. So a G0 is a rapid speed move. Um, then G1 goes back to its normal 33, 35 millimeters a second feed. And it generates all this for you. You put that, you, you pop this onto an SD card, pop it in the side of your printer and hit print and you're making a ghost trap in this case. Um, so that's what I would recommend. That's what I would recommend to get started. If there's enough interest in this and there seems to be, I'll probably go through this in more detail specifically. Um, but I would just recommend, there's a lot of printers out there, but the Creality Ender 3 is probably the best bang for the buck at 160 bucks shipped to your door brand new with loads of aftermarket support. It's like the LS of 3D printers. Um, it's not necessarily the best, but there's just way more of them, and it's cheaper than anything else. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully this interests you guys a little bit, and I didn't just waste my time for four views. Um, and we'll see you next time on The Dryway Engineer.